Well, this is quite the experience. I'm just going to document what just happened to me at my alma mater. I was just at my alma mater, the U of T music faculty, the place I started my Toronto adventure other than uh, the first year of my life. And, uh, well, you know, I walked in the building. There was a pile of free books that I looked through, set some aside, and I was walking around reading the, you know, grant announcements and degree options. I thought maybe I should come back for a master's or something. Not really sure it was worth my time. Try one of the pianos for 20 minutes in the classroom old times, and uh, left the classroom, and there was uh, some guy recording with a cell phone, and he asked me, oh, are you with the Toronto Summer Music Center? I don't know, a former student, I was thinking of re-enrolling, just passing through the building. I was like, oh, okay, you're good, I have a good day. I thought, okay, that's weird. Don't remember him working here back in the day. <laughs> and uh, when my business, I, can, I finished reading all the poster boards, which was the main thing I came there to do. And, uh, you know, they put that information for people to read it. <laughs> and um, then I went back and got the stack of books that I had set aside near the free books and went to the door. And it was raining, so I paused for a minute. And uh, it's only because it was raining that I paused there that I had this interaction with, guess what? The police. Yeah. This gentleman phoned the police on me, uh, the former student, uh, s former scholarship recipient of the U of T music faculty. Um, <laughs> And uh, I saw the police, and I thought, that's weird, they're wandering, they're kind of awkwardly like, oh god, do we have to talk to this guy? And I asked them, hey, do you guys have a plastic bag? Because <laughs> it's raining. That's the only reason I was still there, and I immediately knew, I mean, I, I hoped maybe people were better than that, but I immediately knew that we were dealing with the latest Amy Cooper of Toronto. And I'm going to go back and find out his name in a second, but <laughs> the dude who had been like, after I told him, oh, I'm a former student. I'm thinking of re-enrolling. He heard me playing through the door. Um, he knows I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, he like walked around filming me. And like uh, acting casual, like he was looking at his phone, but being like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I even asked him when I was on the second floor. I was looking at Mark Salmon's office to see if there were office hours posted in my old professors. And I said, oh, you know, Mark Salmon's in in the summer much? And he was like, oh, uh, no, I don't think so. And I was like, yeah, I don't think so either. And he was, and he was like, oh, did you take classes with him? I was like, yeah, yeah. I took his, uh, he was like, which which ones? <laughs> and I thought like, I don't know, this guy, conversation, this is weird. Like, why is he approaching me? I didn't, I never addressed him. I'm just a member of the public reading the notice boards. So I shouldn't really be approached unless it's maybe jovially. <laughs> I'm not a person like any other. And uh, I said, oh, I, I took the cross list of graduate class and uh, his third year class, I didn't take the. He didn't. I didn't take first and second year with him. And I walked away because I was uh, offended that he was um, que um, questioning me and uh, obviously filming me without my consent, which is uh, probably not illegal, but definitely um, it's not the impression you want to leave on someone. And if I uh, do return to this institution, I'll have more ability to complain about his behavior, which is quite classist. Because you know, when the police approached, I said to them. After I asked them if they had a bag to help with the rain, I asked them what they were doing before they asked me. And, and he said, the guy said, oh, as my colleague said, we got a call. I was like, oh, really? The colleague hadn't said that, actually. And, and I was like, uh, and I said, oh, really? Because they don't like how I look. And uh, the lighter-skinned cop said, oh, oh, no. And the darker-skinned cop looked me dead in the eyes, and he said, yeah. And I told him, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a former student. F from here, I paid them thousands of dollars. And he looked at me like, oh, shit, yeah. And I was like, yeah, it's a very classist place. The UT classic music faculty. Oh, there was somebody dropping off the mail. <laughs> in my place of residence. And, uh... Uh, uh, where I teach piano. Applying what I was taught by Mr. Mark Solomon, uh, who wasn't there this, in the summer. Huh. And, uh, yeah, so I spoke to those gentlemen in uniform. I told them, uh, oh, it's embarrassing for you guys. And, uh, you know, they asked me if I needed any help, and I was like, no, no. They said they'd heard a guy was uh, wandering around, and I said, wasn't, well, isn't that what you guys are doing? <laughs> wandering around? These people do, they just wander around campus. And I said, it's funny, this guy was on a phone, and uh, 
He thought it was funny. He, maybe he thought it was strange that I walked around the building and systematically read every poster. And I said to the cops, I'm like, you know, I, I do the reading. I'm a good student. I start at the beginning and read to the end. I don't know what, what, his, what his issue is, right? Except I do his classes. And I, uh, if I had looked exactly, you know, it's funny because whatever. I've got a lot of privileges in life, but if I didn't look, if I looked exactly like him, he wouldn't have phoned the police. If I had looked equally able-bodied and I acquired this ability while I was, while I was a student there that um, prevented my piano playing for two years completely. Um, so if I had looked at it as able-bodied as him and uh, maybe as affluent or um, let's say uh, grooming, conforming, something like that, um, he wouldn't have phoned a man with a gun. So yeah, I'm going to go back and actually talk to the registrar like I told him and say I'm interested in re-enrolling and ask him about scholarships and ask him about complaining about this person. I also told the police a story. I said, uh, it's funny, last year I was running for city council and uh, I went to an event on Glenn Gould's birthday where they showed a film about music censorship in the Soviet Union. You can look it up on YouTube. Um, one of these Glenn Gould movies. And I was handing out flyers of protest music outside the event, Evict John Tory. You can look up that whole saga. Hashtag. Hashtag Evict John Tory. Hashtag. No longer on Twitter. Um, and the police were called then by somebody who I think was a Tory supporter. Because I remember his wife was like, why don't you want to take his flyer? And he said, oh, it's about the mayor. And uh, shortly after, the police appeared. And the irony was uh, was quite rich, because, you know, the police were being called basically to censor sheet music distribution outside of film about classical music censorship, you know, sheet music, um, in the Soviet Union <laughs> a year ago in Toronto, and, you know, authoritar authoritarian, authoritarian, slightly post-COVID Toronto. Now, I don't know, when I was a fresh young teenager and I went to U of T, um, if I would have had the same potential for the police to be called or if the institutions changed just because I'm a 40 year old man now. I don't look like a, a ripe young teenager with a no credit history yet to exploit, extract money from. Because um, I told the police, you know, when I was studying, this happened once, but I was in the building overnight playing piano when I was technically closed, but they looked at my T card that time and let me stay. And it was the piano tuner who showed up hours later when the building was closed to tune the pianos. It was like, what are you doing here? You got to. You gotta get it here. And I was like, what a practice. Anyway, it was funny that at that time, the piano tuner was more of a hard ass than campus police. But today, in uh, what year is it now? 2023? Things may have changed, or maybe I've, uh, I'm just experiencing what it's like to be a near alumnus.